here's my story. It's kind of interesting. When I sang this song, I'm a child of God, it always gets me back to my roots. Um, when I was eight years old, something tragic happened in my life. Uh, my brother, who was seven, died. They were playing a game and somehow he ran into a wall We had corners on it and hit his temple. And somehow he passed away. And during that time, I was in this quest for who, who was I, who am I? And at the young age, I had this burning question. And this question was, where did my young brother go when he died? And so that became a search for me. And during the young age of eight, I started to ask some of the leaders of different denomination. And I, at the age of eight, I could not quite understand their answers. But one really struck me and really hurt me and really set me back. He said to me, he says, that is a dumb question to ask. And boy, at eight years old, you kind of think, wow, who should I ask to not get this kind of answer? So anyway, that set my mind on the quest. Where did my brother go? Well, what happens during that process is that all my siblings, all the siblings were gone. They were in the military, they got married, they moved in the city, they went to college and nobody was home. But my brother and my younger sister. And that next day, my mother, after all the funeral was done, my mother came over and pick up a younger brother. No, he didn't do that. My mother left. She just left. She just didn't give any explanation. She just took off. And so my dad gave me this big responsibility. He said, you're now in charge of your brother and younger brother and sister. And you're going to take them to school, you're going to feed them, you're going to take care of them. And I said, wait, I said, I'm only eight years old. How do you, how do you do these things? Well, my dad was working 14, 16 hours a day. He drove two hours to in the city and two hours back. So he was always gone. So he left my responsibility and he says, I'll give you the money. You take the kids to school and you take care of them. I said, oh. So that, that grew a very big fear in me, knowing, oh, how do you do this? How do you do this? So with the burning question that I was stupid. And so I ran with that thought in my mind. And so I took care of them for three years. I had to fight the battles because all the kids were still their lunch money. And I would look for these kids and get the money back. I literally ended up in fist fights to defend my younger brother and sister. And it went on like that for three years. Um, I just didn't know what I was doing. And many times the beach was my sanctuary. The sunsets was my comfort. In Hawaii, there were beautiful sunsets. And many times I would walk across the house, the beach was only about 120 yards away. I would walk across to the beach and I would just sit and ponder and look out into the sunset and wonder, what is happening? Why do I have to do this? Where is my brother? Where is everybody? I was really going through a lost situation at the age of eight, to about 11 and a half. And then with all that going on, I'm taking care of the kids. All of a sudden I get a 
knock on the door at a late hour the police asked me who I was and I asked him who I am and he says is your dad is this your dad's name and I said yes he said well he got into an accident and he died instantly and that shattered my whole life right there and I said what do I do now what do I do now and so after the funeral, my mom returned from the city and she picked up my younger brother and sister and said to me, Jojo, you're on your own. I said, oh, wait, I'm only 12 years old. What do I do? She said, you're on your own. We took up my brother and sister and went back, went back to the city. Well, here I am, 12 years old, no place to stay. How am I gonna take care of myself? So I decided to ask my good friend, Kenneth Panoki, that I could live with them and his, and his mother. In the Hawaiian heritage, the Hawaiian custom is that we call all our older sibling or older people, aunts and uncles. So my friend Kenny says, oh, my mom wouldn't take you in. So I said, well, Aunt Panoki, can, can I live with you? And she said, yeah, you come in, my son. You belong with us, you're my family. So I lived with him for the remaining of that school year. And I needed to get a job because I needed to pay my, pay something. I didn't wanna have everybody take care of my needs. So, I got a job, I got a part-time job and I worked on a pig farm. And in a pig farm, I used to cut all this grass and I would cook it and pick up this, this bean that is called kiabi bean, some all the kiabi cheese that falls off and I would pick it up. And also, if I pick up a bag of it, I would make 50 cents. So I started to doing that to earn some money and cleaning the uh, pig pens to earn some living. So anyway, that's, and again, that question came to my mind. Where did my dad go when he passed? And I went around again and asked the different denomination and none of that was made sense to me at the age of 12. So I just gave up on it afterwards. But then I worked my way to high school. I finally, my brother who came home from the Marine Corps took me in. You know, one of my grandchildren asked me one time, she says, well, well grandpa, how did you live? How did you take care of yourself? How did you eat? Well, one of the blessings in Hawaii is that there's a lot of fruits just growing wild. And also the ocean is full of food. And so I learned to fish, all kinds of fish, all kinds of fishing. I threw nets, I fish, I speared, I hunt. I did all that. Another way I found out of making money was that when, when fishermen cast their lines from the seashore, they need a lead to drop the, the baits down deeper. And so sometimes this leg had caught on the reef. Hawaii is very reef. And so I would go out and pick up all this lead and then I would take it down to the metal shop and they would melt it and they would give me money for it. So I, I started to learn how to be an entrepreneur. I didn't know I was doing that. <laughs> so those are where I was making money. And school was very easy. She even asked me, well, did you have clothes to go to school? I said, you know, in Hawaii, we didn't have to wear shoes because we all would been bare barefooted a lot. And we only had to use a wear, uh, sh shirt, t-shirt and, and uh, shorts because it's always warm, it's humid. 
So we didn't need all this, you know, fancy clothes and warm clothes and, and etc. So that's what I told her. So life was very simple, but yet my mind was still, I'm alone. I have to do all this on my own. So literally I was on my own since I was 12 years old. I got my first job and I was 12 years old. And so life went on, but I still had that burning question. Where did my father and my young brother go and they pass? And so I left the islands. My brother who was uh, leaving the islands to go to California asked me to uh, go with him. But prior to that, I get to add this to this journey. At about 15 or 14 years old, I happened to find this book. I don't know where it came from or how it is that I happened to come upon it. It's the book was called The Art of Positive Thinking by Norman Vincent Peale. I don't know if any of you have ever heard of that book, but I picked that book up and it was talking about how by affirmations, we can change our inner mind and our inner spirit. And it was many things to do with positiveness, positive attitude, positive outlook, positive affirmation, think, think good things, think highly things, think strong things, all this positive attitude. So I said, wow, this is remarkable. You mean I can change my environment? I can change my, my situation? You know, I, this is all talking to myself, okay, when I'm reading this book. So I decided to try it. I really decided to try it. So I would sit on the beach and I would look out in the sunset. I would say, man, I'm tough. I am great. I'm a good kid. I will say those things. I can play football. I can play basketball. I can play this. I can do this. I can do this. You know, I'm just shouting this thing out to myself, you know, all by myself. <laughs> I said, and I will do that consistently. I would go out in the evening when the sun set, I would just sit out there and I say this thing. It's like a prayer that I found out to be. It's like we call it pondering. And I would do that just affirmations and affirmations and affirmations. And I didn't know that it was taking root um, until one day, I was in school and I was calling the office to whether or not I was gonna graduate and this is like the ninth grade, whether I was going to make it because I wasn't studying because I was working part time. And I was living with a family and I was not having the best environment of education. Because I kept hearing this word, I was stupid, I was dumb. So they called me in and said uh, that I may not be able to pass. And so, whoa, I was very scared, you know. I said, uh, so that night I went out on the beach again and sat on the, the hill and I pondered. I said, I am going to pass. I'm going to pass this grade. I am going to get it done. And I said that over and over and over to myself that I'm going to do this. And it's kind of interesting because part of pondering and prayer that I learned today to deity, to God, to Heavenly Father, to Eternal Father, is to be in a quiet, solemn place all by yourself without no distraction. I did not know that at the time. But as one sits on a beach on a hill and just watch the sunset, you feel that serenity you feel that space that all of a sudden you just involved in you and that space. 
and you commune. You commune. Your heart and your mind is just one solid unity. And I didn't know at the time, but those were the moments I felt that that positive affirmation was taking the root. And this is about like about 16, 15, 16 years old. Well, let me make that story short. I then, of course, I passed that and I went up to the high school. And then I started to believe that affirmation does have an effect on our heart and our spirituality. And so it kind of gave me a boost, kind of gave me a boost. So when my brother came back from the Marine Corps, he asked me to live with him. And so I lived with him for a year and a half. I finished school. In fact, I finished school at an early age. I was surprised. <laughs> and I graduated. I got a job. I mean, I didn't have any education. We graduated on Friday. I went to work on Monday. I had a full-time job. I was working in a construction for a company that was uh, building refineries. And so I got the job and I said, I am gonna become a foreman of this job. <laughs> I started to apply my affirmations. <laughs> I started to dream a little bigger. So anyway, I started doing that and the foreman says, hey, I see you're a hard worker. He says, uh, I want you to um, work side by side with me. Well, he was one of the, the assistant foremen. And I said, wow, hey, this thing is working. <laughs> Here I'm going to work with the assistant foreman. So anyway, I did that and I was improving on, on the job. And again, I never stopped doing information. And I didn't know affirmations was part of pondering and part of prayer. I did not know that. I learned that later on in life. So one day, my brother comes up to me and says, Joe, I'm going to California, San Francisco. You wanna come with me? I said, sure. He said, well, sell all your equipment. We need money to buy a ticket. Now those days they had prop planes. Took us 11 hours from, Cal from Hawaii to California, okay? So here I am. I said, okay. And by that time I had a girlfriend, okay? And his girlfriend had a car and she was always picking me up to go on dates and go here and there. So I had, I had a pretty maid. I had a good job. I had a girlfriend. We had a car. I, mean, I had a place to stay. <laughs> I had money in my pocket. So, hey, why am I going to live this good life? <laughs> so I had a dream in my heart. I had a dream in my heart. I wanted to see the world. I wanted to see what outside of Hawaii. Hawaii. And so I said, yes. So. We packed up and left and landed in California, San Francisco. And there I started a total new life, a new environment, a new situation, a new opportunity, a new perspective of who I am and who I could become. And my brother, Bob, was a good inspiration of person. He also taught me that he used to have this microphone that he would put in his ear and this microphone would put him to sleep. And this, this tape in those days was tapes. He used to put him in his ear and he, it was all affirmations. It was great speakers that was giving opportunities of changing your thinking so that your thinking is in line with your, your dreams or your heart or your feelings. And I was saying, wow, this is great. So I would do that, okay? I would put it in my ears and I would go to bed with it. And so when he asked me that and I said, wow, okay, this sounds like a new adventure, you know? <laughs> so of course we got on a plane and ended up in San Francisco, 11 and a half off flight. But here's what some bad news was. 
we lost all our baggages. We didn't have no clothes, no nothing. We landed in San Francisco and no, we had no money. We stayed with my cousin in San Francisco. And at one point, my brother says, we're gonna go down to Los Angeles, but we need money. So he asked me, he says, uh, do you wanna sell your blood? I said, you got to be kidding. I don't know if I have enough blood to sell. I said, he said, no, they, 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 they buy our blood, it's plasma, I said. And he, he, for five bucks a pint or something like that, and I said, okay, sweet. So he may not even to give blood. I said, see, this is like being a vampire taking our blood away. <laughs> anyway, we did that for three weeks. I you can't do it every week, so we got 15 bucks. And of course, he went out and sell some of some things, and he was a salesman. He was a car salesman by trade. So he uh, said, we got enough money. We can put a down payment on a car. So he went on to buy a car, a 1947 Dodge, and we drove all the way down to Los Angeles. And there I started my adult life. There's more to it, but that's where I came from. And by the way, that question, when I was 27 years old, well, let me give you a little background. When I was, I think 22 or 21, my wife at the time, her name was Terry, had a sister who gave me this book and out of the blue sky, I don't know why she gave me this book, but she gave me this book. And this book was titled, A Marvelous Work and a Wonder. And the author was by the name of Legron Richards. So I said, oh, okay. So I started to read it, but wasn't really interested in it. But I, read I ran across a chapter. And the chapter says this, three titles. Whence you came, whence you're here, and whence you go. I said, wow, what is that? So I started to read. And all of a sudden, I came to the part. Whence you go. I then found the answer to where my brother and my dad is. And I said to myself, hallelujah, I found the answer to my question ever since I was eight years old. So it took me you know, 21 years, I guess, to find it. But that answer literally changed my whole perspective of who I am. I know where I come from, I know why I'm here, and I know where I can go. So all my prayers on the hill on the beach of Nanakuli, looking at the sunset, have led me to this answer. And today, I know who I am. I know why I'm here. I know why I, I am speaking on this conference. It's not an accident. I married this wonderful lady. It's not an accident. If we are in line with the Lord Jesus Christ, there is no accidents in the journal, journey with him. He knows me. He knows me very well. He even knows me before I ask him any questions. He is deliberately has taken care of me ever since I was eight years old. I'm now knocking on the door 79. So he's watched over me for literally seven years. And so my story, I hope it has any effect or influence on any of us. But that was my journey to where I am today. And I thank all of you for taking this time to give an ear to this young man that 
didn't know whether I was going to have a life or not. But living in fear during my childhood was a very challenging time, very challenging time. It, it, it affected me emotionally, spiritually, physically, temporally, and financially. So I leave you guys with that story and testimony that's in my heart. And I give you guys all appreciation for what all of you have done and gone through. This is my perspective from coming from a young man who has no accolades in my personal life. All I claim and be thankful for is that I have all these ohanas, mo'okunas, kekis, that's Hawaiian word for family, children, and grandchildren. That's my blessing. And I will stick with that blessing that Heavenly Father gave me. All these wonderful spirits they came because I came unto him and asked him, will you help me get through this life, especially at a young age? Will you help me? And I know now today he has help and more in my life. And I leave this with you in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Thank you, I love all you folks.